A landlord is a man that owns the land and he, he rents it out to, uh, rents it out to tenants. My family wasn't rich. They couldn't supply me with, with much money or anything. I had to go out and get out on my own and it was only through uh, savings that you could buy some property and pay for it. I have these uh, couple of properties. One of them is a two-family brick and the other one is a four-unit. I rent those out. Now, there's all different kind of landlords like everything else. The, uh, there's landlords that have to, uh, don't have any other income coming in and they have to uh, uh, use all the rents they take in to live on. Which, uh, which don't leave many money to keep the property repaired. Uh, that makes a pretty uh, poor landlord if he isn't capitalized so he can keep his property up. Uh, I, I don't have any problems there because besides the, uh, the property here, I have some savings, see? So I don't count on just one way of, of income. I lived up here now to be 80 years old, and after retiring, a fellow just don't want to sit down and do nothing the rest of his life. I'm the old-time businessman. I, I don't suppose that uh, there'll be many, many new fellows come along very much like me in the future. My father, who was a cobbler, worked hard and accumulated a few pieces of property and eventually bought more and developed and he was very much interested in the real estate business and this is how our family became involved. I got interested in the real estate business and took it up from there. I'd like to see your metal door. You got it with you? I'd like to see that. That's a 24 gauge. Isn't it? Right. Okay, I want to see that door and be sure that uh, we don't have any problem. And another thing, Paul, where he comes down and locks this door, I want it drilled. I want that track drilled so they can get it. We've had so many different problems with residential property that we're more or less getting rid of what you would call the low rental units because of the problems they're having with loss of rent, and maintenance, and problems like that. Now, for instance, this deal with Firestone, we have a 20-year lease with them, which is a net lease, and uh, they pay all the rent, all of the taxes and the insurance basis and everything, all the overages, and they maintain it for 20 years. So it's this, this type of a business that we'd like to get into, this commercial. Well, it's less of a hassle, and it's a better deal, and you're dealing with responsible people. That's the big thing. There's a certain element of white people that uh, have no respect and uh, just don't care. And we have the same thing with the colored people. We have that same thing. But there are many colored people that are very, very fine people. We have them as tenants, and they don't want to associate with that element either. I just can't see how people could live in a place like that. And then, I, after I got through that, then I had to try to decorate the place so it would be more or less a place for some other tenants to come in and live in there. You know the condition of the one that was next door at 619. Yes. I'll go with you after we leave here and we'll see what condition it's in, what we have to do, and put it in shape. And then we'll go down to uh, Garden Street and get the glass measurements of the one there for the front door and see if those keys work, and then let's get that locked up because they're going to move her out at 1.30 today. Now, if you want to go ahead of time and check the glass so you'll have it, or meet me at 1.30, whichever way you want to do it, I don't care, but we can go down there now and check it out get through here we'll spend three hundred dollars for the time we get the material and the labor doing the floors over and painting everything and refurnishing the plumbing that has to be done and the storm doors and repaint the porches and take care of the yard we're getting fifty nine dollars and fifty cents out of one side we got twenty five dollars out of this one so you can figure out the twenty five dollars and pay the taxes and the insurance and the maintenance bills and the water and sewer by the time you get through, it doesn't even pay to keep this property. As soon as we fix it up, we're putting it on the market and selling it. I don't even want to be bothered with it anymore. It doesn't even pay. So now you got yourself another job. <laughs> so what do you think about it, Bill? 
Can you live like that? No. I couldn't live like that. I couldn't, couldn't live like they were staying over here. Definitely couldn't live like that. I don't know. I don't understand people. It's terrible, both on welfare and what happens here. I came over to ask this lady one day. I said, what happened to your door? She says, oh, someone tried to break in. Well, these are young girls with bastard children. And so, sure, all the guys are trying to get in. So they break the window and try to open it up. They're just coming in like some old hound dogs after some bitch, and that's the way it goes. He's a bailiff. He's a man that evicts all the people and repossesses and takes you know, repossess his furniture and such things as that. The only problem with him was that uh, I had asked him originally, uh, you know, to be interviewed. They're afraid that this is, they don't understand what you're filming. And I tried to explain it to them, and they said, well, the court didn't want to get involved in anything like this. That's good. I want to know what they meant. The pit. In order to give a three-day eviction notice, there has to be grounds. The grounds can either be non-payment of rent or nuisance or destruction of property. So after the three-day notice is given, then we give it to the attorney, and the attorney goes and makes a filing in the court. And when it comes up for hearing, and it takes approximately 30 days, and then the court gives the decision as to the grounds that we've used, if they're legal, and why then they give us the eviction notice. And then they have 10 days from the date of the, of the decree Within, they can, the court can move them out any time within 10 days. Landlords are good landlords till they get stepped on. And then it gets to a point where they won't take it anymore. And then they just evict the people and throw them out in the street. And all these do-gooders, you know, and all of this stuff that's going on, this giveaway program, and the politicians, because the more they can give, the more votes they can get. And I've given the money plenty to these politicians, and they're not bashful to ask, and they go around and tell all these people how good and what they're doing for them. So they increase the welfare programs. In my opinion, I would cut out all the welfare. I wouldn't give a damn dime to any of them. I don't think we get enough to live on. With six kids, my husband and I, and he's unable to work, and I am too. We get 236 a month in the welfare. How much? We pay a hundred. No, pay seventy-nine. Seventy-nine. We pay seventy-nine dollars out for food stamps. Yeah, hundred ninety-four. You get a hundred ninety-four back. I guess you can't hardly make it. Cause end of the month, we ain't got hardly nothing here, here to eat. Or at least we can call up some places and see if we get a little help, something to eat. Sometimes we get help from them, sometimes we don't. It's hard to do. To bring other kids up like other people do, it's got a lot of money. Yeah, they can't have things like the other kids do because we can't afford to get it. Make me feel better, make the kids feel better. And all of us make us feel better, you know, feel like we're human beings, you know, low down people, low down class people. Last year we had trouble with the furnace. We got a high gas bill. It was cold in the house, and all the kids had a cold and had to take them to a doctor. It's hard to keep warm. We had to take the baby to get a test for lead poison, and they said he was okay. Well, he was running through the house playing, and the plaster fell on his head. And all the plaster's falling down different places. Landlord don't keep this place fixed up. And he should. Yeah, we do our part. Yeah, we keep the rent paid up. We never been behind on the rent. We don't want to do his part. We can't get out and find another place, you know, look for a place to move. We ain't got the transportation to do it. And all stick up sometimes for you, sometimes they won't. Sometimes you think, well, the landlord's got more rights and the people rents from it. 